The last examples were all well and good, but of course they were devoid of context. So let's do an example that has some context with it. In 2018, a true Gallup poll, this actually happened, asked 1,009 random adult Americans whether public smoking should be banned in the U.S. And 58% replied yes. And just on a side note, there's a simple um, Google search will let you know there's about 210 million U.S. adults, so give or take. All right, so first of all, oh, there's that review question, right? This is from uh, section 1.2. Is this a case or cross-sectional case control or cohort observational study? And it is cross-sectional. We're taking a snapshot in time. Most polls like these are cross-sectional. Of how people feel, right? That's a cross-sectional. Case control would be, um, we compare smokers versus non-smokers, right? Um, which is not what we did in this particular one. And cohort would mean, of course, we follow a group of Americans around for 30 years, which is not what we're doing either. Well, it doesn't have to be 30 years. I mean, you could do it for two years or something. All right, so next, let's verify that the conditions of the central limit theorem for proportions are met. Okay, there's three big conditions. Number one, we need random. All right, now for the first time, it wasn't, oh, it is given, I take it back. <laughs> I was gonna say Gallup always does random, so it's kind of safe to assume, but it was actually given to us, given right in the problem, so this is a yes. Number two, we need independent. And this is the hardest one of all three of them, actually. To be independent, you need little n to be less than 0.05 capital N, as long as you're sampling without replacement, which of course we almost always are. Little n was right here. Little n is 1,009 right here. So that would be 1,009. Is that less than or equal to 0 0.05? And actually, we know capital N here, although we could have done this even if we didn't. If we didn't know capital N, we would just say all U.S. adults and kind of wave our hands at it like a magician. But we actually know what this is. It's 210 million. Hmm. Well, I have a calculator. I can find what that is. All right, so 0 0.05, 0 0.05 times 210 followed by six zeros. So it's 21 followed by seven zeros, if you will. So 210 million is that. <laughs> I'll figure what that is when I write it. So one zero five one two three is five zeros. So if I put the commas, it's ten million five hundred thousand. And a thousand and nine is definitely less than ten million five hundred thousand. So we would say yes to this. So we have a yes here. I should have done that rather than check mark. And we have a yes here now. So we have the first two conditions are met. Now it's time for the third condition. I'm actually gonna do it in a different color just to make it easier, which is normal. To make normal, you need N, P, Q to be bigger than 10. N is 1,009. P, P was given to us, I just have to find it. It's right up here. That's P, right? It'll be some given proportion in the problem. So P is 0.58, and Q is the complement of P. It's 1 minus P, which is 0.42. In other words, 42 and 58 make 100. And of course, if you don't believe me, you can always check it. There you go. 14. Okay, so I need this to work out. I need 1,009 times 0. 0.58 times 0. 0.42. Ah, it's 245. And you know what 245.8 is? Bigger than 10. And that's all you need. You just need it to be bigger than 10, which it is. So yay. All right, three conditions. Random is always easy. It's always given or just safe to assume. Independent takes some work.
If you're given the numerical value for the population size, you actually have to use it and find what that is and do it, right? If you're not given it, if you're given just, you know, adult Americans, you would write all adult Americans in here and just say, yes, of course, because this is a huge number. And then normal is also some work. You have to do N times P times Q, right? And find what that number is and cross your fingers that it's bigger than 10, which it very much was in this case. So we're fine. All right, now that we know the three conditions. So the three conditions are random, independent, and normal. That's the first bit. Random, independent, normal. Then we can describe the sampling distribution, which is the other three parts, right? So if you look at the box, I broke it up. Three conditions, random, independent, normal. And then describing the distribution is shape, center, spread. All right, so shape is normal. You know why? Because we proved it up above. <laughs> so we're good there. All right, explanation not necessary because the explanation is above. All right, center. Well, center is very easy, but you just have to get your symbols right. That's the that's the part where people lose points. It's the mean of the p hats, which is p, which was 0.58. It was given to us. And then the spread is the sigma of the p hats or standard error of the p hats, whichever way you want to write it. You don't have to write both, just pick one of them. It's the square root of P times Q divided by N. So that's the square root of 0.58 times the complement of 0.58, which is 0.42. It's the same number we had up above, right? And you have to multiply those two. They're multiplied. And then you divide it by N, which was 1009. And that's just so awful that we want to write it a lot. Um, we're just going to make the calculator or Desmos find the um, value for us. So 0.58 times 0.42 divided by 1009. And we get 0 0.01554. Remember to keep lots of decimals. Make a note. 0 0.01555. Actually, it would be 38 if I keep uh, six decimal places. So keep lots of decimals keep at least six you can't go wrong with six decimals on these particular ones all right now that we have that we can use it to answer all sorts of questions for ourselves so for example, they want us to find the probability, uh, capital P, probability, that P hat is greater than 0 0.60. Well, I will grab my decision matrix. <laughs> I'm going to find the probability. I want to find a probability right here. So I'm going to use normal CDF. I already know a P hat. Okay, so remember the center, we just said right above the center is mean of the p hats, which is 0.58. So 60% is 0.6, so that would fall on the right side of that. So that's going to be over here somewhere. And this is about 0.015, I don't know. I guess I'll just guess. <laughs> so I think it's gonna fall right about there. Stat Crunch will let me know if I'm right. And then I'm going to shade to the right because it's greater than, so I'm gonna go greater than right here. And I don't know this area. That's the probability that I'm looking for. So I'm going to use normal CDF. And of course, you only have to write this if you're using the calculator. If you're using StatCrunch, you don't really need to bother. So 0 0.60, 1 E99. The center was 0.58. That's the middle of my normal curve. The spread on my normal curve, the where the inflection points fall, is 0 0.015538. Keep those decimal places. It helps. All right, so on the calculator, second distribution, normal CDF, 0 0.601, E, which is above your comma, second comma, 99, 0 0.58, 0 0.015538, there we go. We'll go to paste and press enter. 
and we get 0 0.0990. All right, let's see it in StatCrunch briefly, because StatCrunch can tell us whether our graph is correct. So the mean was 0 0.60, oh no, 0 0.58, sorry, 0 0.58. Standard deviation was 0 0.015538. That's the standard deviation of the sampling distribution, also known as the standard error. And we wanted a greater than, so I'm going to choose this greater than. I'm going to let this be 0 0.60, enter. And there we have it. And our picture actually wasn't too bad. 0 0.099. It's nice to know that StatCrunch can back us up and show that what we're doing is correct.